first grade friends. So we are going to, um, we're in the middle of the book and we're going to read chapter four, We the People. And again, this is Flat Stanley's Worldwide Adventures. And today we're going to talk one more time about how we use things that we already know to help us understand what we're reading. And in this, in this chapter, they use the word kidnapper. Now a kidnapper, if we think about kid, napper. Now it's not a, it's not a kid that's napping like or sleeping. It's actually if um, if a person is taken by another person, and that it would be like a robber steals things, a kidnapper steals people, and so that's what that term means is, is somebody that's that's taking a person. Okay. All right. Here we go. We the people. Stanley spotted a pair of police officers strolling toward him. He looked around for a place to hide before he was spotted. Then he saw it, a big framed poster, taller than he was, hung on a side of the building. It showed a crowd of smiling people of every possible shape and shade, wearing traditional garb from all over the world. At the top were the world words, we the people. Stanley leapt up and balanced inside the frame, plastering his face into a smile. He silently apologized to the white bearded rabbi he was covering. The police officers were right in front of him. Their walkie talkies crackled, calling all forces, national hero misplaced, description 11 years old, less than one inch thick, brown hair, possible kidnapping. So they think somebody maybe took him. But actually, do you see Flat Stanley right there? He jumped onto a poster and he's hiding on a poster. Let's go, said one of the officers, and they raced away. Stanley allowed himself a sigh of relief until he noticed two men on the other side of the boulevard. They were both wearing dark suits and sunglasses, and they were staring right at him. They started crossing the street, weaving between cars, their pace quickening. A chill went through Stanley's body. Kidnappers, he thought. These might be real kidnappers. At that moment, a crowd of people came marching down the sidewalk, chanting, Change the law! Do what's right! Truth and justice must unite! The two men were pushing their way through the crowd. A place card held high by a marcher read, And justice for all, slid before Stanley's eyes. He jumped for it, so he tried to jump onto a big place card. H hanging off the back of the sign, Stanley glanced back, the two men were spinning in circles in front of the We the People poster, wondering where he had gone. So he jumped from the poster onto a poster that they were holding on a sign. I need a disguise, Stanley thought. A block later, Stanley dived into a recycling bin full of newspapers. He started shoving crumpled up handfuls of newsprint under his shirt and into the legs of his pants. He learned in school how to fold boat-shaped hats out of a newspaper and now he made one and put it on his head. So he's stuffing his clothes so he looks more three-dimensional instead of two-dimensional so he's not so flat. And he put a boat on his head because his head is still flat. A tour group was gathered on the giant steps of a building nearby. Stanley rustled up the, to the back of the group trying to blend in. Most, many of the most important buildings in Washington were burned during the War of 1812, the tour guide was saying. The liberty of Congress was mostly destroyed, as was the Capitol. It is said that the smoke could be seen as far away as Baltimore. Even the White House was ruined, but not before a life-size portrait of George Washington was cut out of its frame and sneaked to safety. We are all very lucky that the most important documents in our nation's history weren't lost during the burning of Washington. Let's go inside the National Ar Archives and see them. In a grand room with a very high ceiling, Stanley bent over a large piece of yellow parchment. Parchment is old paper. Crowded with script. Script means writing. It was the Declaration of Independence dated July 4, 1776. The tour guide said it was written by Thomas Jefferson. John Hancock's very fancy signature stood out among the names of all the people who had signed at the bottom. The tour guide said that when people first came to America, Many of them just wanted to be themselves without getting into trouble. They wanted the right to be different, and that was the first thing that the Declaration of Independence declared, that all people are equal and entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In the same room, Stanley saw the Constitution, which set up how the government worked. The president ran things, 
Congress made laws, and a Supreme Court made the tough decisions. The building also had the Bill of Rights, which were the first laws to get passed and are still the most important ones. Right at the beginning in the First Amendment, there was freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and the freedom to protest. Excuse me, a small voice said. Stanley turned to see two girls staring at him, holding big, colorful guidebooks. My name is Soo King, and this is my sister Chu. We are from South Korea. Are you Flat Stanley? No, Stanley lied. The girl frowned. Your head is flat, she said. Please, we are big fans. May I take a picture with you? At least it's okay to be different in America, Stanley thought. He put a crinkly, newspaper-filled arm around the girl and smiled for the picture. Just as the camera flashed, Stanley saw two men in black suits and sunglasses appear in the doorway to the giant room. The kidnappers. Stanley turned his back and bent his head close to the girls. I need your help, he whispered. A moment later, Stanley spied the men in black as they kicked a mound of scrunched up newspaper on the floor next to the Bill of Rights. He watched them as they escaped, as he escaped, sticking out of Su King's backpack, folded up to look like a guidebook. So here she is helping him escape. There's Flat Stanley. All right, tomorrow we will pick up with chapter five, The Monumental Mistake. Bye, first grade friends.